Hello, I am Father Jacob Nambudagam. Hello, time. Currently, Director General of the Society of the Catholic Apostolate, commonly known as the Palatines. I was born in a small village in the south of India, in the state of Kerala, at a place called Ayambara. My parish is dedicated to the little flower. And I was also dedicated to St. when I was born. I come from a large family of ten children. I am the ninth. My father was a music master. And we have agricultural works too. So right from the childhood, I also used to do a lot of work. I did my schooling, my place, and when I finished the 10th standard, I started thinking about becoming a Palatine, a priest. In fact, I had the desire to become a priest right from my childhood. Somehow, I was very much fascinated by the stories of the missionaries, especially going to North India. <clears throat> so I also wanted to become a missionary priest. The source of my vocation, I would say, was mainly because of the prayers of my mother the good examples of my parish priest, the many religious in my own family, and the desire to go to a mission. So after finishing my studies in the, the high school, I decided to go to seminary. And one of my cousins, a sister, knew a Palatine priest, and so I <clears throat> went with her to have an experience in our minor seminary at Trivandrum. I was very fascinated by the life of the seminarians there, and I joined in 1972. Mm. After one year of minor seminary, I was sent to Nagpur to do college studies and philosophy. I did mathematics, physics, and chemistry. And after that, the novitiate, four years of theology in Nagpur. And I was ordained priest on 19, eight, in 1981, 20th October. So this year, I celebrate 40 years of my priesthood. After my ordination, I was sent to a philosophical institute in Goa and I was a spiritual director. I was very young, but I liked this work of accompanying the young boys, young seminarians, listen to them. I did as much as I could. I enjoyed playing volleyball and basketball with them. Anyway, after six years, I was sent to Rome to study spirituality and psychology. I did one year of spirituality, a master's degree. When I was in Goa, I also did a master's in philosophy. Then four years of psychology. After finished, just a wonderful experience, especially since I was staying in the house of our founder, St. Vincent Palotti, in Rome, at the General Aid, at the International College. That gave me a deep experience of our founder because his body is still there in the church. He died in 1850, but his incorrupt body is still there. His room is there, the museum. This saint was a mystic, a prophet of communion, a man of prayer, a man of action, a great Roman saint, 
really inspired me even more. Then I went back to India, became the novice master. For seven years I was novice master. That was the best part of my life, I would say. So many novices, full of activities, apostolic life, and it was a wonderful time. Then I went to Nagpur, again director of a pastoral center. I started counseling and helping people. Then I came back to Rome as general secretary in 2001, three years as general secretary. Then I became the general consultant from 2004 to 2010. And by God's mercy, then I became, I was elected Director General of the Society, 2010. For the first time, somebody from Asia was elected as Director General. That was something historic. And I was re-elected in 2016. And in one year time, I finished my work as Director General. Now, looking at my life, my story, I always believe that it is good to be a priest, it is good to be a Palatine. Even if I am born again, I would like to be a priest, I would like to be a Palatine. I consider the vocation to priesthood as a great gift. I know that today some there are so many accusations and People talk a lot of negative things about priesthood. But the truth is, there's a beauty in being a priest, in giving one's life for God and for God's people. A priest is a shepherd, a pastor. He lives for others. He's not for himself. A priest is also a human being. He'll have failures, limitations, because he comes from a family, he has a history. He carries with him also all the wounds of a culture, of a family. So he has to grow, and he may never reach perfection. But that awareness can give him a tremendous amount of humility, make him humble, and make him strive to reach for, uh, see perfection. But he's a chosen man. He's a pastor according to the heart of Jesus. Therefore, a celibate priest, a pastor, will be always needed in the church. And the church will depend much on the priestly service. Secondly, I must have a lot of time. My founder is St. Vincent Bagotti, a Roman saint. We can talk about so many aspects of his life. He led a very poor life. He was walking around the streets of Rome, doing all things, going to the prisons, teaching in the universities, sitting at the confessionals, visiting the sick, preaching missions, and at the end of the day, <clears throat> kneeling in his room for hours and hours in prayer after all the works that he did. He was a mystic, a man who almost was always breathing in and out God. He realized that God is a God of infinite love and mercy. And this God, in his infinite love and mercy, sent Jesus as the apostle of the eternal Father. So Jesus came to save, to heal, to feed, to give life. He became all things to all men, to all human beings. Therefore, to imitate Jesus Christ means to continue his saving mission to gather people, to bring together people, to work together, 
priests, religious and laity, all working together. His mission was to bring together people of different cultures, nationalities, rights, come together to build up the God, build up God's kingdom. St. Vincent Pallotti hardly went out of Rome. He has never visited other countries. But he was so much mission oriented. He was working at the Propaganda Fide, Urbaniana, confessor for the seminarians coming from all over the world, especially from the East, China. So he had such a passion to be a missionary. Like St. Therese of the Little Flower, who never went out of her convent, became the patroness of the missions. Pallotti, though he has not gone out of Rome, was a universal saint who embraced all human race. He believed that all of us are created in God's own image and likeness. We are all equal. We have the same responsibility. We are all baptized. Therefore, the lay people they have the same responsibility and dignity as God's faithful. We all need to work together and we need to come together. That's a great mission of St. Vincent Pallotti. Therefore, as a Rector General, there are certain things that I have learned from our founder. Number one, that we are all human beings. We may belong to a particular nation or culture, but we are all created in God's own image and likeness. Whether you are from Tanzania, from Ukraine, or Poland, or India, you are a human being. You are dignified and precious. All the children, whether they are from Syria, or Iraq, or United States, they are all God's children. So we need to care for them, protect them. That's our mission. So the universality. And when St. Pallotti, St. Vincent Pallotti celebrated the Epiphany, Octave of Epiphany, precisely to celebrate the universality of nations and cultures. Secondly, Following our Vincent Balotti, our Saint Vincent Balotti, I believe we all need to be mystics in the real life, here and now. A mystic is someone who is able to see God, the Almighty, in everything. I come from India. We have a strong mystical tradition. The people are religious minded, God conscious, and we have also great mystics in every religion, Hinduism, Islam, Christianity. We are able to see God. We are, and I think that's so important today. I see also in some parts of the world, we are consciously denying God. And so we are gods. We are not gods. We are simple creatures, vulnerable, fragile. We have only one God, one Creator. He is our loving Father. So that awareness, that mystical sense, contemplative sense, very important. Thirdly, St. Vincent Bologna prayed, Lord, make, make me bread for the poor, for the hungry, water for the thirsty, clothes for the naked, and so on and so on. Make me all things to all men. We need to have the compassion of Jesus. We need to reach out. The very mission of Jesus was to save, to give life. Therefore, we have a great responsibility to go out and especially console, to keep consolation alive. Here in Poland, I met many confreres who are working in the hospitals, in the hospice. They go to hospital, they visit the sick, they anoint the sick, they hear the confession, and sometimes you, they prepare them, the people to die peacefully. 
Now, this is a very core mission of Jesus. Much of the gospel speaks about the healing mission of Jesus. He healed many people. Even today, when we talk about healing, people come together. Therefore, all the, all the members who are working in the hospitals, in the auspices, in the parishes, to promote life, that is the mission of Jesus Christ. And finally, St. Vincent Malati also teaches us that we are all apostles and disciples of Jesus. In our own respective way, in our own state of life, we are an apostle. We are all disciples of Jesus, and we need to live the life of Jesus. This is a message of Jesus, uh, Vincent Malati, and that's why he established the union of the Catholic apostolate, where all of us together work for God's kingdom with the same dignity and responsibility, and that is the core mission of the Union of the Catholic, union of the Catholic Apostolate. So I leave this message to all of you that our God is good. We had a tremendous pandemic, never lose heart. This pandemic reminds us that we are creatures, we are not gods, we always need God. The more we trust in him, the greater will be our happiness. God bless you all, and I always say, it's good to be a Palatine. It's good to be a disciple of Jesus. Thank you.